All right, next up for the Skybird, we're going to do some binding. We're going to finish off the body today, right before we get to the finishing spot. I am using the Stumac binding bit, and I am using Stumac binding for this. That's the only way to go to get this right. You really only want to use plastic cement. You don't want to use the acetone or lacquer thinner method. I really don't like the way that works. I feel like the binding always comes loose, so always use plastic cement. That's my tip of the day for this video. The Stumac paperback tape is outstanding. There's nothing that's this strong. I always recommend using it. I'm so glad they brought it back. So we'll run the binding all over the body. I bought this plastic cement on Amazon. I think I got four bottles for a pretty decent price. And then I did end up buying that Stumac uh, tape dispenser. Not 100% happy with it, but I bought it. I got my mom a Christmas tape dispenser, automatic cutter, which is great. I should have used that. Here we're just trimming the binding to fit that uh, end. So the binding is going to cut off as we get to the neck piece then. Again, this is a odd sized guitar. You can see how wide it is around the shop. And then that edge gluing it in is a little bit tricky. You can see the glue run it all the way to the edge and then tape it up. Don't be shy using the tape, use more tape. I also have a big rubber strip uh, that I can wrap the body in, but I don't really use it all that much. I really do like the tape. Then we're going to do the same to the top of the headstock. I'm going to cut up the binding before I glue it. It's the only way to do this. So we're going to glue the wings on, on the top there. And then we'll run the binding along the back side of the headstock. So I glued the first major strip on. You can see that there. And then what I do is I run the glue around that edge. Always let this dry for 24 hours before you start fooling around with it. It makes life so much easier. And then we'll just cut it. A little bit more glue, trim it up. And having that little bit longer binding then helps. So here's cutting it up. Get a little bit more leverage. And then we're gonna sand down the binding on the top. That's where the fretboard's gonna go. So I got the binding matching up into the fretboard. It's a real nice look. And we're gonna clean out the Truss rod cavity. Make sure we've got a nice clean truss rod channel. So we'll get some files, file it down. And then we're gonna use the big fat scraper and scrape down that flame dash. A little sanding, a little scraping, gets it all perfect. Careful with that file, it's a little aggressive from Stumac. And then what I've got is a burr that I throw in a drill press or a drill and just cleans out that cavity real nice. Chisel it out slightly, make sure that it works. Got enough room to adjust before you finish it. I've done that too. And then we'll scrape the binding on the top and the sides. Again, I'm using that big fat Stumac scraper. Might be one of my favorite tools from them, to be quite honest, for how many different uses I have for it. Here we're going to then cut the belly. And we're actually gonna do this by hand. We're not gonna take this out to the bandsaw. This doesn't take that long. That is my rubber bandado plane 
And another plane to just clean this up. Since this is mahogany, it goes really quick. And then a trick here again today is if you're using the scraper or if you're using those chisels, you got to come back with some sandpaper and sand out where it's not level. So those planes tend to dig out in a couple spots when you're using them. Make sure that you sand them flat. So we got some hide glue for the fretboard. This makes a significant difference. Maybe. <laughs> No, in all honesty, I really do like in, like using hide glue. I do think it makes just a little bit of a difference. I think the guitar is slightly livelier. It's at least my two cents. Clamp this down with a bunch of clamps. I put a top board on there so I get even pressure. And then throw a couple clamps on the other side as well. Running out of clamps. We'll then scrape the sides. Again, same process. Doing the sides of binding is always my... I don't know, I hate doing it. But just a slow back and forth process. And this gets all ready to do the final sanding. So on the top, since we did an angled body, we sand down the binding and the piece of wood that's sticking out. So this is what gives us the angled body and the angled top. This is the special trick then to get it all level. And we've got the binding and the body that we make that final adjustment on. That's the only piece that I did not use the um, pin router for outside. So just the piece of paper, sand it, sand it down, we're good. And we'll take this outside and do some more sanding as well. And then everyone's favorite sanding, just keep sanding till you're blue in the face. It's actually midwinter. Full jacket and gloves, you can tell. Don't know how I got stuck with this Craftsman sander, but it's probably time to get myself a new one. Got that Makita in the basement that works really well. This one in the garage, I don't know. I'm doing a lot of rough sanding with this, so. So I'm going to do some neck carving and I've got a essentially about a one inch bit that we're going to mount to a board, stabilize that and then run this through a couple times. You can see I've got a mount on the back and we'll just slowly lower that bit so that it looks perfect. This is just a random sort of jig setup. That big fat board on the bottom really helps me out. Flip it over and do that on the back side as well. I actually think this was like a 59 carve custom bit that I got from somewhere. But then we'll take this back downstairs to the basement and carve with a spoke shave, some files, a whole bunch of different tools. This doesn't take all that long because it's mahogany. Do the top of the heel there. Top of the neck. This is one of those dragon rasps that I really enjoy using. And then I've had that spoke shave for almost 15 years now. The curved file that I'm using there is actually really nice. I don't remember where I got that though. Maybe it was a Stumac, another Stumac purchase. Here we're trying to check the neck measurements. He gave me a spec he wanted to match to, which I think was just under an inch. We'll cut off the back of that heel, and then we'll just go at it with a file. Some guys love this process, some guys hate it. I, I don't know. Sometimes I like it, sometimes I don't.
a cut 4x24 piece of sandpaper helps sort of give me the right round profile. It's a trick that I learned that actually works really well. You just get enough bend in the sandpaper that it cleans up a lot of the scratches from the spoke save. Here is a higher grit, same process. Creates a little bit of dust. You can see that sandpaper then comes down a little bit further, a little bit better of a curve around that heel. Lots of back and forth. So before we do any of the final finishing, we're going to figure out how the tuners line up, drill those holes, trying to figure out where they sit. And we ended up replacing those buttons with cream buttons, tuning buttons. You can never have enough 16th drill bits. So we'll come back after we've got most of that rough work done, draw out where the neck scale is gonna be. So I think it's 24 and three quarter, draw that line, set up a center line here. Draw that out, and then we're going to line up the humbuckers for some TV Jones humbuckers. That template is way off, so we're not using that. So this is a LP template that I've got, and we'll just modify this slightly to clamp this down. What's great about having a wood-topped table that's made out of plywood is that you can just drill in anywhere that you need to to mount the clamping apparatus that you're trying to do so that I drill a hole mount that down and I can do this really easy it's really helpful to have this set up that way got a top bearing bit router Just route it out Had to lift it up just slightly off the body because of the neck on the fretboard. And then here we're going to finish up the fretboard by making a N dot template so that we can get this all lined up perfectly. Started making a lot more templates in my last couple of builds. That way I've got them for future builds. So we drilled those out, I don't know where that video went, and then we're gonna use some blue epoxy, sky blue epoxy, a little bit of a tint, put some tape on it, drip in the epoxy. Originally we wanted to try and do sort of raindrop shaped, but I did not have that ability given the size of the router bits and everything. Even when I tried to carve it, it wasn't working, so trick with using epoxy is let it sit, come back with the flame thrower and pop the bubbles, and then use a toothpick to make sure that you've got all the epoxy down in the hole. You will find air bubbles where you don't think you have them. So let it dry, come back, let it dry, come back, and use that torch, and it makes a huge difference. We'll then come through and sand them. Always let the epoxy dry for at least four or five days. Don't come after it after that first day. The longer it dries, the harder it gets. And then we will level the fretboard. Now that it's on the neck and the body, 12 inch radius. Draw some lines on the board to make sure we are sanding it even. Start with 80 grit, move up to 320. You don't really need to go anything higher than that. I have 600, I never really use it. It's not worthwhile. Once you get to 320, you don't have any lines. Clean out the fret slots. Some glue in there and some dust. But now we have a guitar. going to 
bend the fret wire. We're just using Stumac medium fret wire, nothing too fancy, too big or too short. Run this through my fret bender and then come through and just nip, 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 and pop them in. The trick with uh, binding on the fretboard is that you're going to use the nippers to clear off the tang a little bit. And then once you clear off that tang, make sure you file down where that tang was. Because as good as you are at nipping there with that Stumac end nipper, you're still going to have a little bit of a tang. And just filing it really makes a huge difference. And do not buy the cheap tang nippers. I have gone through two of them. They're garbage. Just spend the money and get the Stumac one. So after we do all the frets, we're going to come back and push these in. I use some type on wood glue. You don't want them to pop up. And I only do a couple frets at a time. I do about seven frets at a time. Glue, let it sit overnight. Another seven frets, glue, sit overnight. And then we're going to have a much better fretboard of doing it that way. We're then going to level the frets on the side. We're going to get them flush, and then we're going to put that 35 degree bevel on it. Then we'll leave it and we'll do the final fretting once the guitar is under pressure. I made a template to drill the tailpiece and the bridge. Since I've got that center line, I just lined it up and we're all good. So next up, we'll start finishing this guitar. Thanks for watching, guys. We will see you in the next video.